and obviously it's a big fight between me and, me and Andy Fowler, both from the same city, so there's a lot of pride and a lot of pride in my test day. I was with Callum and I was with you guys a couple of weeks ago. Um, you seemed laser focused, laser confident, then that was more Callum's time. Now you're the same, same vibe around you. You seem like you're in perfect shape. I saw a picture of you looking good. Do you feel great? Yeah, I feel it. The way I fight, I should feel the two days out from the fight. If I'm not ready now, I'll never be. So I feel, I feel good. I feel I've had a good camp and I'm in a good place. And obviously, I'm, I'm really looking forward to Saturday. You know, people, people, maybe on their part are thinking I'm, I'm, I'm on the slide or got no desire, which I kept hearing today, which is fucking crazy. But um, you know, I'm here to show on Saturday that they couldn't be any further from the truth. You've said that you believe there's a massive level gap between you and Anthony Fowler. I imagine that you're saying now two days out that you'll be far too much more. Yeah, I think you know, obviously once the fight settles down, you know, it's going to be a hectic start, it'll be a busy start. Um, once the fight settles down, you know, the two fighters settle down, I feel I'm the better fighter. I think I'll show them on something. Just a final word for me, obviously the guys at Blue Moon are now training Callum, he looked sensational two weeks ago on that job. Yeah. Um, Buddy McGurk told me that the power's going to come, he doesn't need to look for it, and that it did, second round stoppage. Just thoughts on that for me? Yeah, just obviously a, a bit of big statements, knocking Castillo out, obviously. We thought we first and foremost with Castillo. But, you know, he's okay, so we have to look at it now. It was a great statement by Callum, doing so, so, something that, you know, Beaver and Marcus Brown couldn't do. Um, and he looked very good doing so, so, you know, I'm with you up, Mr. Callum. Liam, thank you for speaking to you. Hi, Liam. That last time we spoke was in this room, six, seven weeks ago. Yeah. Um, Anthony's talked about how good his sparring's been. How's campaign for you since then? Yeah, very good. I've had good sparring. You know, I've sparred a number of fighters um, over the past six, seven weeks. A couple of fighters on the bill also, you know, Conway, um, Troy. I have a good sparring myself, you know, but we can bang on about sparring all we want. It's what happens when you get in the ring under them lights. Um, Battle of Liverpool, is it a good match this one? Uh, it just depends what way you look at a good match. Um, you know, it's a good match for me as in like, it's a must win for me, regardless. Whatever, whatever he tries to come with, you know, I want to answer to, so, you know, it's... Yeah, it's, 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 it's personal to me, yeah. And Joe was talking about calling bluffs and what have you. Can you just spell out exactly how the fight was up and no, made? I think Shane and Andy were going on about fucking bluffs. It was nothing to do with them, it was to do with Eddie. Eddie done an interview and spoke about me and Fowler and I bit at it. And I phoned my manager and said, phone Eddie and tell him to fucking make that Fowler fight. And, he's, and, he, and he made it, so it wasn't really a bluff. I was thinking Eddie's mentioning me for Fowler, trying to build that and like using my name. But, like I say, I've got to give him, give him his credit because he made the fight, so um, it went a bluff. It's not to do with Farrell and Shane, it was aimed at Eddie. And it's a massive night, isn't it? It is, yeah, obviously it's a sold out crowd, so it's a massive night for us both. Good luck, Liam. Thank you. What will it mean to, for you to be back in the M&S arena, fighting in there in front of your home city after you know, a couple of years of that's not been able to happen? Obviously, it, there's, there's, there's no place like home. You've seen the reaction, you've seen the turnouts, and you've seen it sold out on Saturday. So, for the Liverpool crowd, being a scout for myself, I feel there's no place like home. I've had good memories in this arena. I've had good backing off of this city, and I fully intend on keeping them on Saturday night. We heard from Anthony in the press conference that you know, he feels he has more hunger than you. you know, what do you have to say to that? Where, I don't, where are you getting that from? Social media, so, like, hunger. I'm still here, you know, 12 years as a pro, still doing what we've, we've always done and you know you talk about desire I come from a family of four professional fighters there's not much more desire coming from that house and you know what does this fight mean for you and, and for your career do you think it's just a must win for me it's a big bragging right in the city um, and it puts me back to where where I wanted to you know where I want to go obviously I'm coming off the back of a loss whether it was controversial or not it's a loss on my record two losses on my record and the balance will kill me so you know, a win on Saturday will put me back on the track towards where I want to be. Uh, and finally, for me, you mentioned in the press conference never losing to a you know a domestic fighter. Yep. How important is that to you? That yeah, that, that that's something I intend on keeping. I just feel, you know, I, I be Fowler on Saturday. I'll probably never ever lose to a domestic fighter. And when I'm sitting on the couch at 40 years of age, thinking, you know what, I'm, I turned pro, I had 30 odds, you know, 30, 30 something fights. I never lost to a Brit. I feel that'll be a good little. You know, a good little bit piece of pride for myself. You know, I only lost to Canelo, Mungia. Uh, so I just think that's something I want to keep. Excellent. Liam, you said obviously, you know, you fought the likes of Canelo, you've been a former world champion. Um, do you think they're obviously overlooking you at all? 
or just try no, to use your name as a stepping stone? Of course, yeah, and I think that's a, you know, obviously, I still, I be, I'm, I'm, I'm honest and I'm, and I'm not, you know, I don't really talk shite and I'm not gullible. They've looked at me and thought, you know what, he's on the slide, he's coming off the back in Russia, a loss in Russia, been out the ring a long time, perfect time to get me. So it's just time to me now to prove he's, he's a wrong, he's a miles away. Uh, obviously, your style, your come forward style, high uh, guard, yeah. and obviously Fowler's got the power. What stylistically, how do you think your style's going to match up on Friday? Night? There's no secret how Shane's got him trying to fight him with the, the long left, lo long levers, you know, the long left arm, one, two, bang, one, two, left, two, one, two, right, uppercut. It's no secret how Shane's trying to get him to fight. That's looking at him as a fan or looking at him as an opponent. Mm. Shane's trying to get him to relax. His robots up when he doesn't relax, and when he tries to fight, he's very stiff. He can't fight inside. So that Shane is trying to, you know, work around that. And it's no secret to see what he's doing. Uh, for me, you know, they think I'm just going to walk out and put my hands high. You know, then Shane's more stupid than I thought. But obviously, I rate him as a coach. I don't think he's that stupid. I think he's saying that to try and get me to do it. Yeah. You know, walk out and be a, be a macho man, mm -hmm. a little bit derby. You forget I can box. I was ABA champion. I was on the England team myself. You know, I turned pro early. Otherwise, I would have had the same amateur career as Farley. He bangs on about his amateur career because he turned, um, he, he stayed amateur still 25. Mm. But you know, we'll see, we're two days away. Do you think he's an improved fighter since going over to Shane? Yeah, I do, but I think once once he feels the pace and they're still there after four, he reverts back to what he always does. He runs out of ideas. Right, and obviously uh, on the same night, there's a massive fight across the pond, uh, Wilder, Fury yeah. 3. Just give me a prediction on that fight. I think Fury's just got his number in every way, bullies him, he rags him around the ring. Um, I picked Fury to win, but I'd never ever write Wilder off with that punch power. Right, and finally, by, for myself here, just look down the camera and, and tell the fans what we expect to see on Saturday night. Yeah, obviously, just a good fight. Obviously, two Liverpool lads going at it, sold out crowds. Expect excitement, but obviously, expect the inspiration. Yeah, so thanks a lot. We thanks for listening.